Welcome back to the program. I'm Zev Brenner, and we have a very special broadcast tonight. As I mentioned at the onset of the show, is that uh, over 77 people uh, that uh, that are over there, that uh, 70, 77 young men have unfortunately lost their lives since Rosh Hashanah of this year uh, because either a suicide or drug overdose, a terrible, terrible situation. So uh, we are going to be examining that uh, tonight and in just a moment we'll be speaking to Tzvi Gluck from the Amudim organization. He's the director of their group. They do wonderful, wonderful work in trying to work with people, trying to work with families. But I think one of the biggest problems is we have to educate ourselves, our community uh, to what is going on. Uh, Jake, uh, do we have Tzvi on the phone? I know he's a, no, be a he no. and on the phone. Okay. So we're going to be getting him on the phone right now. And the uh, fact that we'll be calling, we'll be, uh, we'll be calling him, um, and you'll be able to call him tonight with your questions in just a moment as well. And our number, of course, to call is one eight 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 N Y C Radio. That's one eight 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 N Y C Radio. That's the number to call us. And uh, yes, uh, so uh, and that's the number to call. And if you want to email us, zev at talklinecommunications.com. That's ZEV at talklinecommunications.com. An excellent way to get through it. A reminder, of course, we're weeknights with you on WSNR 620 on the AM dial. And uh, we look forward to communicating with you. If you haven't done so, please join us on Facebook, on Google+, on LinkedIn. Uh, also a wonderful way for us to keep in touch with you with our broadcasts, our programs, and uh, we'd love uh, for you to be in touch with us on a regular basis. Okay, I think we're going to be establishing contact uh, right now. Uh, Tzvi Gluck, and you know what? I believe we have uh, Tzvi. We'll, we'll patch him over here. Uh, good vach, Tzvi. How are you? Uh, good vach, Reb Zev. How are you? Sorry, a little phone issues here. Not a problem. By the way, I had the... Pr pleasure and privilege of seeing your esteemed father at City Hall at Gracie Mansion the other day at the celebration for Jewish heritage in New York. I talked to Rabbi Edgar Glock. It was a pleasure to see him and you're carrying on his good work with your community activities. So thank you for being with us. Uh, Shavua Tov. Shavua Tov and thank you for having me and uh, thank you for those warm regards. <clears throat> I want to begin, of course, on a sad note. I, I was in Borough Park the other day when I was told that a young man, 22 years old, committed suicide on Wednesday. I know people are visibly upset about that. Let's look at that. And then, unfortunately, another tragedy on Thursday. You're dealing with this on a day-to-day -day basis. Just tell everyone so what Amudim does, and let's look at the tragedy that took place this week. So there's a couple of things. Amudim, as an organization, tries to do crisis intervention and help guide people to receive help and services that they need. Um, and part of what we've been doing under the guidance of our Das Taira is to create better awareness so that people can get the help before it gets to uh, our doorsteps, um, so to speak. And I just want to mention that, <clears throat> you know, when it comes to publicizing these types of things, it's actually a it's not so simple, and I'm just going to say this out there now because I'm sure some of the callers are going to have this question. There are studies that show that sometimes publicizing, publicizing these matters may be harmful, <clears throat> and there may be copycats and people that may try to do things uh, because they hear that others have done it. And then there are studies that show the other way, uh, that publicizing these things will help to bring awareness and ask people to reach out and get help. Um, I'm not a clinician. I don't know which one is accurate. I know personally when I do send out mass emails or when we do do awareness events or interviews such as this, we do find an influx of calls of people seeking help. And that is really the purpose of why we're trying to do this, is to bring publicity, not necessarily to speak about the individual cases or the echidim that are no longer with us, but if we can use that as a uh, you know springboard to get others to know that there is help available and there are resources out there, that they should want to do so. And by the way, I know every time you're on the air, you always tell me a lot of people call in afterwards to get help, and that's the reason why we have you, because we have to educate people about it. And there are people who need help, may not even know there's a play, an avenue for them. They may think they're alone uh, in their problems, and when they realize that there are others that are out there in a similar situation, and there is relief and help, so I think that's important for some of them that unfortunately in this kind of situation. Absolutely. 
So let's look at what happened this week. Unfortunately, two tragedies took place, one Wednesday, Thursday. Let's look at what happened, and then we'll analyze uh, what's been going on since Rosh Hashanah of this past year. Um, so on the case that happened on Wednesday, unfortunately, where a young man you know, is no longer with us, I have to be honest, I do not know the specifics other than what the media is reporting. Uh, this is not someone that we were involved with you know, either on treatment or on therapy services. But what we do know is that a young man is no longer alive and no longer with us to share his pain and see what help could be done. Obviously, there was something there. The following tragedy, which was the next morning, or early afternoon, rather, <clears throat> is a uh, young boy that uh, was found of an apparent uh, drug overdose. Um, and this has been, unfortunately, a very common phenomenon that's been happening, I mean, just so much, and we're hearing about it, and we just made the decision to no longer allow this to be swept under the rug. You know, the families are suffering, siblings, parents, spouses, children, whatever it may be, and we need to do whatever little bit we can to help. Because of the sensitivity of these issues, I would, and I know this from dealing with our place, where they've had young people also unfortunately lost their lives to drug uh, overdose and drug abuse where sometimes the parents themselves have trouble grappling with that and going to a funeral and been participating so you can imagine outside the family it's a lot tougher dealing and grappling at some of the issues that affect general society also unfortunately affect us in the Jew new orthodox jewish community as well right i mean I, i'm gonna what comes to mind is the story that uh, the great Rav shalom shradron has said many times where he said that he was once walking down the street in Yerushalayim and there was a child that was injured and somebody picked up the child to run to a hospital. And a woman walked by and said, what's going on here? And someone said, oh, a child, you know, got hurt. And the woman said, oh, you should have a Rafu Shalema. And as she got closer, she noticed that this child was her grandson. She started screaming, my mayoral, my mayoral, we need to save him, it's my mayoral. And that's really what's happening here. <clears throat> and that's what's happening here on a regular basis. Every time we hear about a story, the story is irrelevant. We're always thinking as if it's somebody else. Oh, I mean, that, that poor family. But we're not internalizing it and saying this can be one of our own. And I think in order for us to really be able to do that is we need to understand the awareness. And there's a lot of it, and we can discuss in detail some of what should be done for prevention. But if we really feel that each and every member of our community is our own family, which we should, then maybe we'll be able to take the appropriate steps, and it'll be, in every case, my mayoral, as opposed to just somebody else's. Now, let's look and analyze some of the facts, and we'll get to possible solutions, at least to try to mitigate the circumstances. Are the majority of the cases that you're dealing with, the 77 since Rosh Hashanah, are they drug overdose? Are they suicides? Are there other issues? Let's look and see what exactly is transpiring. So, I'm not in my office, as you know. I'm actually upstate, so I don't have all the data in front of me on my fingertips. <clears throat> but of the 77, most of them were drug overdoses or alcohol-related. Um, and then there was a, you know, a, 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 a sad larger number of you know, suicides as well. But most of the deaths that we're dealing with is part of this growing uh, drug epidemic that is plaguing our community as so many others. So drugs is a certain important issue as to what people... Now, are we also dealing with people depressed? Are they these people who have been victims of molestation? Are they dealing with some other personal issues that are making them turn to drugs? What? Uh, because it's not just somebody just using drugs and overdose, and there's sometimes other reasons as to why they're using them. So you hit the nail on the head more often than not. And I'm not going to say 100% of the time, but certainly a large percentage. People that turn to drugs or people that turn to suicidal thoughts and even carrying it out have suffered a very, very serious trauma when they were younger. Sexual abuse is certainly on top of that list. But then you also have matters such as bullying in schools, physical abuse, severe emotional issues. Uh, you might even have people that have certain learning disabilities and because of that got bullied in school and then turned to other things. So there's really a lot of issues that are going on at once, and we keep, you know, in the community beating around the bush instead of trying to tackle it head-on. But I, I'm, it's, 
I'm sad to report that, yes, yeah, sexual abuse and molestation is definitely a large percentage of these issues. Unfortunately, I remember there was one young man who came to our studio a number of years ago, and he was a former member of the Safra Hasidic community. By the time he came to me, uh, he was full of tattoos. I don't believe he was as observant as he once was. Um, but he was a victim of sexual abuse, and that really changed his life. And unfortunately, he took his life because dealing with that, not everybody's able to grapple with some of those issues. It's a very, very tough situation. Everybody is different about that. And we have to be able to deal with this problem and working with those that have been abused and give them the support that they need. Um, and, and a lot of times they need a lot of support um, and for people to feel, to empathize with them. If they feel that there's just them against everybody, nobody believes them, I think that contributes to some of them can be suicidal. Right. So I'm going to actually quote um, what Dr. Shlomi Zimmerman said recently uh, on a, you know, we did a um, speaking engagement. Uh, and there was a whole bunch of speeches from, from Amudim, Rav Elia Budni had spoken, Rabbi Wallerstein, and Dr. Zimmerman. And Dr. Zimmerman was a to something that we've then heard from, I believe, Rabbi Shral Salantar had coined it initially, which was he would like to change what they write on death certificates from being overdoses, drugs, or suicides, that they should just write the word shame. Because he says most people that are suffering because of the shame that's involved in it, are not able to get the help that they need, and therefore that's why they're suffering, and that's why they're going down that spiral. And I think it was Rabbi Shrel Salanter that had said nobody ever died of hunger. They died of shame, and because they were too proud, they didn't go out to get the food for their hunger. So I think it's something that we need to remove the stigma, you know, especially with sexual abuse, but really with mental illness as well and with other issues. We need to remove the shame, remove the stigma, remove that whole component, and then people will be able to seek professional help that they need, and they'll be able to head towards the right path of recovery. Has the stigma been, or is this something which people in our community are willing to grapple with, to deal with, when somebody says, I need help, I've been abused, I've been... Um, I've been in a bad situation with my family. I'm being beaten. I just don't feel comfortable. I can't be at home. Are we receptive to that message? So it's definitely getting a lot better. I mean, and there are a lot of resources available for people, you know, that have those helps. I mean, just as an example, you have relief resources that, you know, provide referrals to therapists, you know, mental health professionals, treatment plans. You have organizations such as MASK, uh, you know, Our Place, Madregos, uh, the Minyan in Lakewood, Arnava, I mean, you know, and of course Amudim, but there's so many out there. The stigma is definitely being broken, and the community is definitely more aware of it, but we still have a lot more to go. I can't tell you how many times we get calls for help from people, <clears throat> and they're always starting off by saying, but nobody can know. I mean, I'm just going to give you an example just recently. Somebody reached out to us for help. Their child was, a, uh, unfortunately, a victim of sexual abuse. And it then turned to a lot of other issues, addiction being the bulk of it, and needs to go to a very specific treatment program that can treat the addiction and the severe PTSD from having been sexually abused. And this is a very costly program. So we were able to get them, you know, a reduced rate, some scholarships, whatever help, even get the insurance company to cover some of it. <clears throat> but there's still a very big expense. And when I was sitting with these parents, I said, listen, we need to reach out to people that you know. You know, we don't have unlimited funds to pay for these things. We need to try to raise it. And there is a family member in this person's family that has some money. And this person's absolutely not willing to reach out to anyone they know to help because of the shame. So, and, and this happens all the time. I'm just relaying one story where... People are scared to reach out because of shame, and that is why people can't get the help they need. So that is what we're trying to break. We're speaking with Svi Gluck. He is director of Amudim, and we're looking and analyzing unfortunate situation. Over 77 people have committed suicide or been victims of drug overdoses since Rosh Hashanah, just a number of months ago of this year. When we come back, we want to get your questions... Welcome back to the program, Mom. This is Zev Brennan, Sfrig Luck, director of Amudim with us. We're looking at the suicide within the Orthodox community, 77 since 
so unfortunately, murders, uh, suicide, not murders, suicides, uh, drug overdoses since the Russia Hashanah this year. We're taking your phone calls, one triple eight nyc radio one eight 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 nyc radio Email us, ZEV, at talklinecommunications.com. I believe we have Rabbi Leiter from Muncie, Rockland County. Shavuot Tov, your question for Tzvi. Rabbi Leiter, are you there? Yes, can yes, you hear me? Question. Yes, go ahead. Your question for Tzvi Glock. Yes. Um, could I inject some optimism, albeit at the risk of being a bit premature, with regard to the segment of the suicides that are due to molestation? I think that, in part, the battle is not as hard as some people think it is. And that's because if we would just take the cases of the known molesters that basically everyone agrees are have been molesting kids for many years, and we go after them full force and thereby put the enablers of those molesters on defense, we would be able to make a dent in the molestation crisis that's in part responsible for the epidemic of suicides, at least, at least, at least that segment. And that's not so hard to do. It doesn't take a whole lot to get the Tsibur aware and opposed to the enabling perpetrated by certain Rabbonim and Askonim that are keeping the well-known molesters so on the street. So, so what's your question for Tzvi Gluck? What do you want Tzvi Gluck to do? What's your question for him? Uh, well, is, is, is that a realistic strategy in his view? What, what, a realistic strategy to do what? Is, is, isn't it realistic instead of uh, at least to, and to deal specifically with the segment that that's um, due to molestation, uh, to focus instead of focusing on on every molester, focus on the known molesters, go after them full force, and thereby put their so, and the, and the, the strategy should be to go after the known molesters full force. Okay, speak um, your response to that. So I'll answer as follows. First of all, the majority of molestation occurs within the confines of people's own homes, immediate family members, and close family friends. So that's the largest percentage that we're dealing with. Obviously, of course, if there are known perpetrators, we need to do whatever we can to make sure that they're not able to perpetrate and hurt anybody else, whatever means necessary. So I really agree that we must step up to the plate and be aware and accepting of these issues and dealing with them. And But I will tell you that we're certainly getting closer than we ever were. Uh, but that is a very valid point, yes. I mean, because I think that is a big gap in the anti-molestation strategy. I think there's a, there are a lot of simple things not being done without any good reason for it, that in just in, maybe because people aren't focused on it. But that one strategy would be employed effectively with focus. I think we could m- make headway where it's not been made for years. Okay, I think uh, he said that uh, that was a good idea, and that we appreciate uh, your phone call. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to take some email questions. Here's an email question uh, from our listener, Tzvi. Uh, she wants to know, with all due respect, how do we know that the statistics Mr. Gluck is publicizing are accurate and not exaggerated to promote his cause? Can they be independently confirmed, or do people need to take his word to believe them? So, uh, I do that as follows way to prove it to you because most of the families of people that passed away are not willing to step up to the plate and say it happened to their loved one because of the same embarrassing factor. So let's assume the number is only one. That would be one too much. But we know from the main there were 19 of these cases that have been publicized by the media. So let's assume that for whatever reason I am fabricating numbers, which sadly I'm not and I have no reason to, um, every death one too many. Anyone to even have that type of question means they don't value the human life of even one person. So I find that email to be a little bit unacceptable, to be quite honest with you. Uh, but I guess it's a legitimate question to find out how you got your numbers. So. Well, the numbers came in either through uh, people that were friends with in the various cover Kadishas, the medical examiner's offices, cases that we've dealt with, people that have called us telling us that few months since we started tracked and actually giving out the numbers of other people still that have called us whenever they know about a case so that we can keep the statistics accurate. We're able to use it to provide uh, awareness and warning to others. So whether it's people ask or, you know, organizations, uh, our place to contact us when they know about these issues, 
And a lot of these we know about from our vast network between the cover cases, the police departments, the medical examiner's offices, uh, and things of that nature. BC writes, kudos to Tzvi Gluck for tackling the sensitive issue of suicide in the from community. Does Rabbi Gluck feel that some of these suicides are the results of pressures being put on these victims who simply can't handle the pressures of being forced to live a life that they simply doesn't suit them, but are forced to do family and community pressures? Uh, unfortunately. It's me. For and that don't do it. Um, tough question. We have those that have left, you know, suicide notes have detailed things of that nature in it. Um, but but just to remind the listeners, the bulk of these deaths are actually drug related. So let's just keep that in mind as well. I know some of the media outlets are using, you know, the word suicide to be able to create highlights. But we need to remember the underlying and and, and the larger as well, but uh, we certainly feel there is data to suggest that a lot of the people dying from either of these are people you know, let's see if we can get a little better connection. So we're going to break. We're also going to hear the latest news from Israel. We'll continue our conversation with Svi Gluck, doing an outstanding job at Amudim, dealing with tragedy in our community. You just heard about 77 people, unfortunately, lost their lives due to suicide, a drug over- overdose since the beginning of the Jewish year, since Rosh Hashanah. Uh, 212-769-1925. 212-769-1925. And that Sri Gluck is our guest, so we'll get to some of your emails right now. Here's A.I. Rubin, uh, writes from the Lower East Side of Manhattan. He goes, Shavua Tov to both of you. Zev, great show as usual. The only way things will change is when Tzvi Gluck has his own weekly radio show on as many Jewish stations as possible so that this great Sadi can get and bring his precious message, get his precious message over to um, Hope to Yeshua and as many people as possible. Why doesn't he have the Amudim hour on the air? So Zev, give him airtime on the radio. We're all, and, and wants to know also about uh, drug overdose, only male. Where are the females? It's me. So before I answer that question, I just want to go back to the original <clears throat> email that I responded to. Because when we spoke off here, I feel I may have come across a little strong. I got to be honest. I am extremely emotional about these issues, and I take it very personal. I understand that a lot of the people don't know <clears throat> what's really going on, and that's why we're doing these awareness things. Um, but sadly, the statistics are true, and, and sadly, we are losing way too many, and that's why we're doing this. So I do understand that the person that wrote that in doesn't know, so I just want to take a moment and say I'm sorry in case I came across too strong. Um, as far as the female, so again, I'm not in my office, I'm upstate, but the numbers are approximately 60, 60% males, 40% females, uh, in dealing with the issues that we're talking about. So I don't have the exact numbers. I have the exact breakdown at work of how many are from what and over what time period. And uh, we do this again or whatever. I can get you those data. Or if somebody specifically wants it, we can email it to them as well. And yes, so we'd love to see so we do a weekly radio show on these issues. It's certainly very, very important. So AI, if you or anybody else can get any people to back it up, please contact us. And uh, we'd love to see it on there. I think can be important, be very important to provide a, a really vital community service. So AI, good question. Here's a, one from David in Queens. The fact that we have lost 77 precious neshamas in such a short period of time is heart rendering. Yasha Koach to Rabbi Gluck for all the amazing work he and Amudin do. I'm wondering why we're pumping overdoses with suicides. Is it because we can't always tell whether an overdose is a suicide or because we feel that overdose and suicide have the same causes or some other reason? So the simple answer is because we decided to make a cutoff at the age of 35 years old and just figure out how many people are passing away. <clears throat> we weren't looking to break it down. We're looking to make awareness. Um, yes, it could be many times that the overdoses may have been suicides, could be not. Most overdoses we know are accidental. People that were clean, their body built up a tolerance to whatever drugs they were using. And then, uh, just to give a simple example, somebody takes a lower dose, and then as they become a bigger addict, they take higher and higher dosages. Then once they get sober, their body builds up a tolerance again to what would have been the lowest dose. 
But if they chas v'shalom relapse, they sometimes go back to the most recent dose they took, which their body can no longer handle, and that's a fatal and lethal combination, and that is why they pass away. So we call those accidental overdoses. So the real reason is, I don't know what to do. I know this is happening. I know we're losing our kids. I know that 77 in 10 months is ridiculous. It's an epidemic. It's a magaifa. So we're just out there saying, help. I don't have the answers. I really don't. But I know that what's going on now is not helpful. I do want to just share with you, Zev, a quick story, Mm -hmm. which is one that keeps me going. Because many times people call me and say, you're crazy, you're screaming too much, you're too emotional, you know, you're never going to change it. So i got to just say one story, and I'm going to try to make it quick, Zev. Um, We're familiar with Rabbi Eckstein from Darius Sharim, right? Sure does amazing work as well. Right, so there was a story that for many years, um, people that had children that were born with this horrible disease called Tay-Sachs, were sent to special Tay-Sachs ward, which would be considered modeled, you know, modern-day pain management till somebody passes away. There was really no cure. And the ward that had the most of these was in Kingsburg Jewish Medical Center, and there was a waiting list for two to three years to get a child into that ward. Well, not too long ago, Rabbi Eckstein got a phone call from the management at Kingsburg Jewish to come down for an event. And when he got there, the event was the closing of the ward. Rabbi Eckstein, through his awareness, through his programming, through his genetic testing, was able to effectively shut down a ward because there was no longer a need for it. I know we're fighting a a really tough battle, but we're not going to give up. We're going to use stories such as Rabbi (coughs) Eckstein to give us the ability to go on. Do we need more prevention programs? We do. Do schools need to be better prepared how to deal with all these issues? Rabbeim and teachers need better trainings? We do. Do parents need to be better educated to know what to do when these issues happen to their kids? Absolutely. There's just so much out there that needs to be done. And there's a lot that is being done. Baruch Hashem, organizations like Torah Mesora have really been stepping up to the plate. Organizations like the Safe Foundation, Madregos, Mask, so many others, they're really doing it. Of course, we at Amudim are doing our part as well. But we can't do this alone, and we don't have all the answers. And at this point, I'm screaming for help. I don't know exactly what that is, and if people could get involved in whatever way they can, we need to deal with this issue. Let's, we have a few moments left. Where do people contact you to help to get more information to be involved? I mean, the easiest is to contact. Look at our website, www.amudim.org, or they can call the Amudim office at 646-517-0222. But I do want to be very, very clear, Rebzev. It's not so much about contacting us. Obviously, that would be a good start. But if people have resources in their own community, they should get involved with them as well. They should just reach out and see what can be done. There's so much out there and a lot more than any one organization can tackle. Okay, here's a quick email. Uh, Joseph writes, Goats we go, you're doing a phenomenal job. People in the community don't realize that for every so-called successful suicide, there are four other attempted suicides. Any comment in there is that you, we're dealing with the ones that committed, so I'm sure there are a lot of that contemplated that reach out for help, and some of them uh, are help, correct? Oh, I, I can say that about suicides, really more about drug overdoses. Uh, almost every time we deal with a fatal overdose, there are people that reach out, friends and family that say we have others that have the same problems, they don't want to end up like their friend. Can we get them help? Can we get them services? Now, the truth is, I'm going to be very, very blunt and bold. These services cost a fortune of money. And, and I, I sort of coined the phrase last week, and I should be forgiven for saying this, but apparently funerals seem to be cheaper than rehabs and treatment, and that's why it's so much easier once somebody dies to raise the money to bury them. But when they're begging for help, people just aren't there stepping up to the plate. And we need to just urge people that each and every life is valuable more than anything else. And people really need to get more involved. Okay, we're out of time. Let's give out your phone number one more time. We apologize, others we're going to get to. Tzvi Gluck, uh, director of Amudim. Wonderful job. How can people reach you again? One more time. So the phone number to Amudim is 646-517-0222. And our website is www.amudim.org. 
Thank you. It's big luck for the important, valuable work that you're doing, the mysterious Navish devotion that you have. We look forward to having you back. We look forward to those numbers dropping, not increasing. So thank you Absolutely, for joining Absolutely, Zev. Let's, we all got to do our part, and with help from above and help from each other, we can try to make sure that we don't have to worry about telling another family that they lost a loved one, especially thank at you. a young Shavua age. Thank uh, you, Make sure you tune us in 24 hours a day, talklinecommunications.com, our 24-hour day listen line. 401-347-0304, extension number one, Shibuto. Thank you, Jake. Behind the controls, join us weeknights, WSNR, 620 a.m. from 7 to 9 p.m. and online 24 hours a day, Shibuto. Thank you once again for listening to the Talk Line Communications Network. I'm Zev Brenner. Shalom.